see the nigga that can eat it up right. right. Get you tight and I'm gone. On to the I gotta act like, you know, I know what I'm doing because these people haven't seen. See, they thought that we were going to see us yesterday, and now we're here today. So let's do this thing the right way. I know you guys hear T-Pain in the background. we got to turn them down. If you are listening to the music in your streamer, go to slip.stream. But fuck that. Let's introduce ourselves first. And three, two, one. Welcome and welcome back to your weekly source of anime, comics, video games, and pop culture goodness here at the Elijah Bailey Show, uh, where we believe Hugh Jackman is our Wolverine and chimichangas taste better in the MCU. Don't ask me why, they just do, and that's why <laughs> that's why Deadpool loves them. But as always with me, if we were sitting in the same room like we had been the last two weeks, he would have been to my right, uh, the half-human, half-vampire, and half-demon. You know, yeah, that checks out. You know, you look at that wing on his back, you're like, motherfucker, from, <laughs> from, from yeah, down below. <laughs> it's the Buckety himself. How you doing, sir? Doing great, man. Doing a lot better than I was yesterday, dude. That's I, good. I just, I had, I did some push-ups yesterday morning. Oh, that's what it is. And, um, <laughs> I, I guess I was straining hard. And man, it just caught like a really bad, like, it felt like I had slept wrong. Mm, yeah, but and all creaked up. It didn't and... happen until I did my push-ups. It's just like right here. Mm -hmm, all it's through. finally starting to, you know, them rhomboids, trapezes, loosen up and everything, dude. But it had me. Then I had a really bad headache. Uh, allergies just bother me. But no, I'm finally um, mm. today feeling good, man. Feeling That's good. good. Feeling great. I like to hear that because, I like to hear that you're doing better because, like, you know, right now in these COVID times. Uh, Man, that like, honestly, get you. that's why even when you was like, hey, I'm going to do it at the house. I was like, yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> I would too. <laughs> and, and, and I was like, I was just sitting there. I was like, man, I hope he's all right. Because like I was feeling shitty. And we just talked about that. Like all that coffee in my system. Hey, we uh -huh. got seven viewers. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, hey, what's up, mom? On Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. We are back for this episode. But yeah, I was like, hey, dude, I got to get my sleep. And you're like, man, get that rest. Because like I, I am yeah. one. Somebody asked this question, like, why do men not want to go to sleep? It's because we have so much shit to do. Like, and then when we get to sleep, somebody comes to wake us up. So we just, like, function on no sleep. And uh, I was like, dude, I got to get sleep. Like, I am. I'm, That's really how it be a lot. Yeah. Uh, you just. You just know you how just to. forget to sleep, really. Yeah. And it's not like we don't want to sleep. Because Jessica asked me this, too. It's like, go to sleep if you're sleepy. I was like, no, I'm not sleepy. He's like, yes, you are. You're going to sleep. But I don't feel sleepy. I'm like, I'm. I'm in daddy mode. I'm ready and alert for like if I need to take the dogs out, if we need to do like that's what I'm in. So, but yeah. uh, I think I, I had actually just picked up some uh, melatonin. Melatonin, yeah, yeah, to help me. I'm gonna be done. Get make sure I force myself. Yeah, watch them levels. They say you, you eat too much. Oh, I, I and use you turn light version. skin. I, I, I use a little, a little three milligrams. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna be in here questioning your favorite anime like Joshy boy? Like you yeah. take too much of it. Uh, but for those of you guys that don't know me, I am the terror that howls in the night. Human by day, crazed beast by night. Elijah 5000 here. Uh, and we welcome you. Thank you for joining us today. This is Tuesday, like, damn 530. Uh, as you heard, we had a, a off step, but this is October 3rd, and this is the 333rd episode of the Elijah Bailey Show. Now, a couple things I want to mention. If you look in the corner of your screen, you'll see two of our sponsors. Now, we are sponsored by Switchery. And Switchery is the world's number one online store for Nintendo Switch, Switch Lite, and Switch OLD accessories, pr uh, protective cases, and thumb grips. I actually have a case that's not in here. I moved my Switch to the bedroom, but it is Raichu and Pikachu uh, covering case. And it actually has like boosters on the back. So now when I'm playing uh, Mario Kart with my wife, it just feels even better when I beat her ass because I have that extra grip where my pinkies are. I'm, I'm smashing down on those red and blue shells, but they are one of the sponsors. You guys can go there. You can use our promo code um, Edge10 and get 5% uh, off or actually 10% off there. If you go to Emmy Eats, that is our other sponsor. Uh, the only like really, really fiber and non like convoluted <laughs> ramen place to go uh, if you want the best flavors in ramen uh, the first low carb high protein and plant based instant ramen go to Emmy Eats and put in Edge 10 and get $5 off your purchase and uh, another podcast I'm on What's Up Fandom you can also do Fandom 5 and get money off uh, so that way you can get two discounts on your Emmy Eats now today uh, for the show if you're watching on Twitch you can use chat commands um, you can send your emotes animated emotes especially if you have subscribed remember it is September oh well, I guess it's October now but it's still yeah, 
rolling sense. over. <laughs> it is still Very rolling possible. over. Uh, yeah, we're at the Very beginning. Possible. I would, I would do it anyway. You got Amazon Prime. Go ahead and use that free Prime subscription on the show that you love. We bring it to you every week. Now, I know streaming has been few and far between, but that means I got real shit going on in my life. You don't want a needy bitch. You don't want me to be up your ass every day with streams. You, you, you want to have a streamer that's like, hey, this guy has a life. I want to hear about that life sometimes because I have some issues with Oklahoma City and their Scissor Tail Park. Uh, it did it. it. Uh, we'll talk about that later in the show. But today we're here to talk comics because we had some trailers drops that are amazing. We had Black Panther yes. 2. Uh, Black Adam showed us a bad guy. And we finally watched Thor Love and Thunder. And I know you wanted to talk about this because of all the uh, controversy with it. So, Oh, ooh. there is controversy with it? Bro, Tika Waititi's not coming back. He's not making another one. He said, oh, fuck wow. it. Yeah, because people up here, you know, bitching and all this other stuff. Like, well, fuck it, then you don't get my work anymore. And he'll spend his time making other great. I mean, his track record for like great shows is kind of unrealistic. Like everything he d- does is a hit. And he's getting ready to move to the world of Star Wars. So I'm excited to see mm-hmm. what originality he brings to it because he transformed Thor to a damn near almost different character. Or he pulled out those qualities that we saw that weren't really high, like highlighted because they wanted to make a real rugged Viking. And it's like, Thor is naive. Thor is, you know, he's goofy. That's who he is. And he brought those characteristics out. I enjoyed him. Hopefully you did too. Um, But yeah, Uh, my mom said it doesn't work. You might as well drink a night, night, night cap. It just depends on who you are. Hey, what's up, Superhero Dreamer? Thank you for joining us on YouTube. Let's go ahead and get into today's show because we have a lot to talk about. Now, one thing that I did not plan on because we were going to do it at the studio at your house was uh, having the comic book covers because I deleted them from my phone because I'm low on memory. So if you (laughs) what we do every month at the beginning of the month, we cover comics. I deleted them straight. Oh, I got them straight out the book. Yeah. Um, the first week of the month we cover comics, second week, next week will be anime, third week of video games, and the fourth week is our Bailey Bugle. So we're going to give you the October comic book recommendations, how we see it, two from Marvel, two from DC, one from Image, and one from Dark Horse. If you want to start with Marvel, I'll go ahead and pull up those covers <laughs> uh, if you got the show notes open. If not... Yeah, um, I had them open, then I, I guess I actually you closed them right. up, but I got them right here. Okay. We got Marvel comics coming in with, as I scroll down, <laughs> Conquered Shores. Issue mm. one of five, uh, written by Christopher Cantwell. Uh, yes. A century into the future, not much land remains on Earth. A combination of worsened climate and devastating war has, I mean, with the Cree, has left the surface of the planet mostly inhospitable. With an ever-dwelling population, or dwindling population of air breathers, and a profound lack of superheroes to protect them, enters. Nemoir, who's these many years on the no longer king of Atlas or Atlantis, but the ruler of the entire world. That's a 32 banger, rated T, $4.99. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Do they have a date? Um, no, no date. No. But it's Marvel. Marvel yeah. does that. They do. Uh, next up on our list is uh, Crypt of Shadows, Volume 1, written by Christopher Cooper. Mm. Um, and uh, the heroes of the Marvel Universe spend most of their time in the bright sun flying high above it all. But every once in a while, they venture into the darkness that lurks in the hidden corners of the world. There lurks the creatures, the monsters, and vampires, the ones who prey on innocence and goodness. Yes. Join us in, say, join us in some of your favorite heroes from Tales of the Fang, Claws of Silent, stalking swamp creatures to celebrate All Hallows Eve. Hell yeah. Uh, this is a 56 banger. One shot, which means it's only this copy and that's it. Ready to five ninety nine. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm I'm not so excited because like you see Moon Knight, you have the new Wolverine, you have uh, Man Thing. Like there's so many characters that you don't get to see about, and I want this dark universe that they're promising for Marvel. Uh, the same that they're doing for DC because you know the things that go down in the shadow. Those are the ones like why is Blade fighting? Because he's trying to get to Dracula because of what he's done in the plague he set on the world. So you're like, Dra- Dracula in here? Yes. The Howling Commandos? Yes. The, 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 you have some freaky deaky steins in here, so I'm ready for it. <laughs> um, DC Comics, I'm going to read the comic first, then show you the uh, cover. And this one was funny to me because it reminded me, you remember the episode of Dexter's Lab 
where uh, Monkey had to go against Macho Man, like he was the intergalactic wrestler. Oh yeah, this is exactly yes, this is exactly what it was. Actually, let me start with this one first because the artwork for this is amazing. You guys know I'm a Static fan. I, I bought it as soon as it came out. Uh, one of the is Static Shadow of Dakota, issue number one, written by Nicholas Draper Ivy, who I've been watching his artwork and shit on Instagram, and I'm so happy he's got this. Him and Vita Ayala. Art is by Nicholas, and there's variant covers. There's about uh, three other variant covers besides the first one. It looks beautiful. Um, $3.99 US, 32-page banger, one of six, and the variants are $4.99 on cardstock. On sale October 4th, so that is today. Static is back. Though Virgil and his friends might have been able to stop the government's off-the-books prison operations in Dakota, a powerful new threat lurks in the shadows. The mysterious Ebion is cutting a bl uh, bloody swath through the underworld on a single-minded quest to find his brother. Against his backdrop of exploding violence, innocent people are finding themselves in the crossfire the breakout creative team of nicholas draper and vitaia have returned let me throw his last name his because his hyphen is draper ivy and vitaia have returned to make static's life in dakota city very complicated indeed you've never felt shocks like these so let me go ahead and switch over so you can see uh this cover look at this shit right here now uh i'm not i can't zoom in on wait you, you know what this is this is 2022 let me do it like this okay <laughs> is that how you gonna do it <laughs> yeah 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 you know because you know how i like to pre present stuff a specific way you know, we but here we go it, we gotta keep it you know you know yeah keep the hood like uh there's like a, hood real quick. <laughs> a a chibi version of static in his many forms throughout the years and then the one on the far right with the hood the cap connected to like the jacket and shit with the flow lock and that's the one i like but all these covers are beautiful i love his artwork i love the perception that he takes i love how he uses the lightning and infuses it it just looks beautiful that, that's all i can say um the next comic that we have is the flash issue number 787 written by jeremy adams art by fernando uh Pasiren and matt ryan uh variant cover by george cambadius and black adam movie variant cover by eg cure three dollars 99 cents 32 page banger four dollar 99 cent variant card stock this goes on sale october 18th uh, it's monday night somewhere mondays am i right wally west is back for his adventure to save barry allen but there's no time to celebrate as a new alien with a penchant for golden belts and trucker hair has added a new sting to the life of the flash the stone cold heart stopper of an issue will have you screaming oh my god is how they wrote it was, oh my god i don't ever think i yelled that but whatever as the scarlet speedster gets clotheslined in the face by a whole new era of attitude it's a rumble in the jungle i said that you know who that is coming through uh let's see if i can find this cover because I got to back out just a bit, but the flash is, you know, to, for DC, he's one of my favorite characters. He's the heart of the DC continuity. You guys will always hear me say it just like Spider-Man is the heart of Marvel and to see him like kind of running and trying to get away from being body slammed. I was like, Oh yeah, they know what they're doing. Uh, hang on. I'm almost there. DC had a lot coming out this month. Um, but none of them intrigued me like the flash. Okay. Ah, uh, shit. Stream Deck's not working. Hold on, folks. Boom. You see it? You see it? You see it now? There he is. He's trying to tag you in. And you see Macho Man coming off the top rope like Ricky Steamboat. But he's got two <laughs> other variants. There is Black Adam by, uh, uh, played by The Rock. Now, this is something interesting. It actually looks like The Rock. They're preparing yeah, for the does. film. And then the middle cover is uh, the reverse flash and the flash and this, this distorted speedster battle. I, you can't go wrong with the flash. Like with speed, it presents a whole new level of challenge to the superhero and super villaindom. But uh, yeah, those are your DC comics. Let's go to chat before we move on superhero dreamer said dc baby i can't wait for my favorite superhero to get their spot and then oh my god the ant is here he said sensei <laughs> sound like naruto what's up boy i haven't seen you in a minute what's what's the next con you're going to mom said you're going in and out 
Okay, so we're it's weird. I hear myself fine. Uh, what are you watching on Facebook? I might have to check the logs on there. I uh, got who me? Uh, my mom. She said it's going in and out, but I'm listening on Twitch and everything is flowing straight through. Um, Superhero says, oh, I was never a fan of The Flash. Well, you know what? He wasn't a fan of you. He's not saving you. No. Uh, the Flash. I like The Flash. He's cool. I, I, yeah. I grew up when um, you used to buy VHSs at Homeland. And they had they didn't have a lot of superhero comics that were live action. The Flash with uh, Wesley Allen Ship. That was, that was my joint. But uh, let's keep it pushing, sir. What we got next? We got Image Comics. Three Keys, Volume 1, Issue 1. 399, yes. hitting the stores October 5th. Han Solo artist David Messina Mes- Mes- yeah. invites you to explore the mystery world of three keys. Did the inhabitants of another dimension flee into our reality to save themselves from the terrible wrath that is the great old one? Or to help prepare us to or perhaps ah, help prepare us <laughs> for a final devastating invasion? What if it's humanity only chance to, against the great ones is the impetuous, mischievous mm. young woman in her sardonic fury mm. and surprisingly violent mentor? Yes. That, was a, that was a mouth. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. You did great. I'm proud Thank of you. you <laughs> I like this one. It almost reminds me of like um, it's pretty cool. uh, Wildcat from D.C., taking on the apprentice of like black canary but it's just got like a lot of a lot of body to it a lot of weight to it uh it just caught my eye out of everything that's coming in october and as you guys know we have been doing like two comics the a month for image because they're just the originality that's coming out of of image comics is is mind-blowing uh but this one really stuck out this is one i was like i'm gonna hit on just one this month so you know, this is what we're going for. Uh, last but not least, in our October comic recommendation roundup, let me see if I can find um, the cover for it. But this is Dead Mall. And you guys know I'm a horror fan. I like zombies. I like shit like that. So this one kind of stuck out to me. Uh, let me redo this. But let me go ahead and read it to you. So Dead Mall issue number one. Shop till you drop. The pen mills. Galleria is about to be demolished. Five teens sneak into a mall to take a last look around before it's gone. However, while pen mills has been closed for years, the mall is far from abandoned. A night of exploration becomes a shopping spree from hell. The teens must contend with the sprawling, transformative, cosmic horror of pin mills or be trapped forever within the dead mall. Adam Cessis, I think this is how I say it, Cesar, maybe is how you say his name, is a critically acclaimed horror author and is leading voice in the emerging genre of contemporary YA horror. Clown in the Cornfield earned a 2020 Bram Stoker Award nomination, multiple starred reviews, and has been a... Uh, option for a film so you're dealing with a author or writer that knows what he's doing is basically what they're saying uh you have artist david stole he did the colors he did the uh cover variant and this is a 32 page banger three dollars 99 cents dropping october 26 2022 now let me see if i can find it the only thing that i do not like about dark horse is um website is sometimes they they put some of the covers on the previous month or they push them forward but here we go i found it this is the cover this is what caught my eye and i was like dude i gotta read this i am damn i'm reading junji ito all kind of shit and this falls right into it it almost looks like you know something that you see in constantine the cover's ripped in half you see the the door opening and you see all the horrors inside plus you have five teens so i want to see who dies you know that's that's just what I want to do. Who's going to go next uh, after movie fresh with Sebastian Stan that I watch? You know, I, I need something a little bit better, you know. Um, let's oh, do. No. Hold on. Uh oh. Trying to take commercial break. Go ahead, dude. All right. Uh, <laughs> let me go jump back in the chat. Uh, Mom's watching on Facebook, and the Super Dreamer said, "I'm still waiting for that uh, Dreamer Superman Son of Cow review." Okay, okay, we'll bring it. We'll bring it. I will bring you that review, no problem. But before we jump into our black character, comic character, and it's really going to be an anime character that we uh, celebrate since we missed it last week, we're going to take our first pause for the call. So sit back and listen to T Pain on Slip Dot Stream again. If you're a stream 
streaming, you can use Slip.Stream to stream whatever kind of co music you want without having to worry about any copyright strikes. This was a site created by T-Pain for that because he is an avid video game streamer. If you guys haven't seen him on Twitch, go ahead and follow him. We'll be right back after this commercial break. All right. Okay. There he was. I was like, he was here and then he disappeared. Oh, okay. So before we jump back into this, like what I'm hearing on your end, I'm hearing me in the background doubled. It's like it's picking up from the webcam. Yeah. Yeah. I know. So I'm gonna leave your mic off <laughs> when you get that fixed. <laughs> um, okay. What's on in the background? Let's see. I see some, there we go. All right, folks. He's is that back. Better? Yes, that is. That's. You sound like you never left. Uh, okay, yes, I, I sound normal. Yes, you do. Superhero Dreamer said Dreamer is my favorite character from DC Comics. She's new. Actually, we covered a little bit of Dreamer not too long ago, and I know who Dreamer is. There and there's a live action version, isn't there? I just now started watching Star Girl, trying to get caught up on the stuff that I've been behind on for that. But I heard Dreamer's badass right now. Uh, we will talk more about Dreamer in, we, you know what? We will do a review on Dreamer. There's nothing wrong with that. But in the background, it's got to be like a new Gundam. I feel like the, like the world looks like shit in the background. Like some, some Gundams is knocking oh, shit yeah. down. And then like, is that big O? It's real back there. No, I can't make it out because the white. That's okay. That's okay. I, yeah, I think those colors are just the blurry. Other camera, this camera is kind of yeah, it's like bright, bright. Which right I now. wish you could have kept the other camera. You know how that shit. You say is. what? Like I wish you would could have kept the. Oh, that's G Gundam. That's that first there episode. That boy go. with that. That he's. Well, give me the Gundam Domon, and Domon had to take that jacket off and like, oh, sorry, motherfucker. I'm looking for my brother Kyoji. Have you seen this man? You know what? I was talking about uh, tattoos today, and I was like, Ooh, man. What the hell? No, hey, do that. you say what? I was talking. Uh, no, I like the blur a little bit. I was talking about tattoos today, and I was like, man, that shuffle looks, of lions. Overly aggressive blur. 
a, a, little, a little bit, you know, a little bit. Uh, but let's jump back into the show uh, since we did start a day late, late and uh, uh, started a little bit late today. Let's go to our Tell You Say. Now, every uh, episode we honor a black character, and today is no different. We are jumping right in with a character that I missed and skipped over from Fire Emblem, a.k.a. Nathan uh, Samore from Tiger and Bunny. His name is Fire Emblem because, as you know, well, we'll talk about it in the show. One of the few non-binary characters in the anime world, Fire Emblem, aka Nathan, is an um, effeminate hero who is bull who was bullied by their classmates and disowned by their parents for showing interest in makeup, jewelry, and dresses. Though haunted by this, Fire Emblem is still a confident person and embraces themselves for who they are. Fire Emblem is a man. This camera picks up a lot of light. My bad. It does. Go no, ahead. you're good. Fire Emblem is close to their friends and loves hanging out with uh, the heroines they flirt with the male heroes and they don't seem to mind if anything they banter with fire emblem and don't avoid them even though they get a little handsy fire emblem is flamboyant and proud and sums up their own character in one quote they say a man is made of courage and a woman is made of love so what does that mean for people who are both we are invincible and this is why we pick fire emblem fire emblem embraces the world that uh kind of reflects who we are today non-binaryism different pronouns and it's a badass character if you guys haven't watched tiger and bunny they have a season two you guys need to check it out i think it's still on netflix it's uh, it's a very fun anime because it's a mix between like buddy cop and wrestling so there's our character fire emblem aka nathan um let's keep it pushing because there was a lot of news Let's let's just go into this first and foremost. You want to just hit on it first? You want to just get it out the way? Let's just get it out of the way. I'm about to pull up a clip. Oh, and I I, I saw what you was talking about about House of Dragons, and I was like, yeah, you was right. Don't even watch it. Are you are you caught up on it? No. After okay. you after you hit me with that, I was like, okay, I've got time. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you got plenty of time, dude. Everybody was I like, am, he. Finally... I don't even watch. I don't even watch the the. This is how bad it is. If anybody knows me, I love spoilers. Right. Mm-hmm. Because I love spoilers, that means I automatically love demos, trailers, uh, previews. I love it all. Yeah. I do not even care to watch the the, the preview of the next episode at the end of the episode. Mm, no. But anyway. I love figured. Love of Thunder. Yes. The I, love and thunder. You're seeing clips now, Thor, the love, love and, and thunder. thunder. I've watched it twice since, since I've watched it. Um, people really did not like this film. They're like, that's what happens when you throw money in the big budget. But it's the same motherfuckers that so think wait, that I'm curious, are all like, white. So, so why didn't people like it? It's like, white what people. Was there? You know, white males. I, I feel like they didn't want Jane as, as the mighty Thor, which was a damn fine comic. It's the same people that complained about Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers, same ones that are complaining about, you know, want hey, any. Tap Gaming, what's good? Hey, buddy. Hey, what's up? Thank you for joining us. Um, what did you think? Because okay, what questions do you have? Because you wanted to wait until I watched this to ask me some questions. Honestly, I can't fully remember. Okay, it was a little while I, ago. It was a lot that was going on in this movie, and there was things that I really enjoyed about the movie. Uh, because I understand the tone of this movie was meant to be different. Uh, mm. it was going to be happy go lucky because you know Thor is in a dark place mentally. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's lost. He's kind of confused. Midlife crisis. Of life. Yeah. Um, you know, technically all his family's gone. He don't have a relationship with the one he loves anymore. Then to come find out that the one he loves is, you know, pretty much almost a new Thor. So I mm. think, of, and I think I love how they kind of gave him a, a like a midlife crisis feel. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, even on the fight, first fight scene that we see down here, <laughs> you know, how he just kind of came in his wreck shop and how he, I don't want to spoil too much of yeah. it, but uh, it, for me, even with understanding all of that, man, it just was, it was not hitting for me. Like, I, mm. it was, it just, it felt like it was not rushed because it's top production. Yeah. It looks gorgeous. Fight scenes were dope too. The story itself I just can't even act with it. Mm. And maybe because I know a lot of things that I ride with is like like the villain. Yeah. So if there's a lackluster villain, I'm all mad going to be like, oh, this is, this is trash. Mm. <laughs> and I think the villain, he had potential mm-hmm. to be super, which I think he is super raw. Yeah. Uh, You know, he's, a, he's labeled the God Butcher. 
but we never saw him butcher any god. Hey, outside he hit on the something. First one. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then that was it. So we really didn't really obtain like a fear for that character. All we did was just keep setting our heads like, oh, he needs a hug. He wants his daughter back. A god played him, and now he's mad. Hey. Huh? But that, that that was it. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I'm I'm right there with you because there was parts where when they went to Omnipotent City, like if they would have showed the God, because I don't like the aesthetics. People had like like well, he doesn't have the tentacles and stuff like that, and they said he would have looked just too much like Davy Jones. It wouldn't have worked. So of course they screen tested it. Kevin Feige still stands by the film. Uh, I feel like they showed life and death at a different point. You know, they were focusing on the God dying, but they also focus on Jane having cancer and they should have separate those. They should have seen more of the God butcher fighting and killing these guys. We've never heard of to see those epic battles. But again, that would have just been a battle movie and Thor is moving. He's a Viking. He's a God like over 1500 years old. Like let's move away from just him fighting and he's a person. So what do people go through? Maybe he, does what he has to do reluctantly because he can't find himself. You know what I mean? And yeah. I think that's where he tried to show that Thor, these superheroes, they do have lives. They are humans. It's not like a comic book where they just go in and fight, 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 because there's more to that. Like me as a martial artist, I don't just fight, fight, fight all the time. There's more to me to a person. Like we had that conversation with Caden, you know, about teamwork. And I feel like that was what this movie was. Him and Jane breaching whatever issues like their egos and like actually opening up to communication and being a hundred percent honest Valkyrie figuring out that she wants something more than just being a King and that she has this PTSD from watching her loved ones, her lovers die in front of her and not being able to do it. And then also what is the purpose of the gods? Cause we saw Zeus is uh, you're not coming to the orgy. You can't come to the orgy. Like that's all you're talking about. Zeus when people like gods yeah, are getting just- killed. And I feel like the deleted scenes that they had would have been better because Zeus actually like talked to Thor and told him some stuff that he doesn't tell his kids, you know, and he talks about the lightning and where it comes from. But that stuff didn't get added to the film. So there was parts I think would have enhanced it. And more. that's the thing, like for, for it to be that long, because it was like two hours. It's something like that. Yeah. yeah, a little bit over two hours for it to be that long. I just felt like there was a lot. They really was, focused on kids like they're the the purpose why we do stuff and they're the future where, yeah. like you said, it should have delved a little bit more into the God Butcher because I could see why he was mad. He, he stumbled upon the Oasis and he was like, look at this. Oh, yeah, there ain't nothing like you hey. know, the one you've been worshiping just kind of, you know, blah you off. Uh, um, So, you know, I, I completely understand that. Mm-hmm. Like I said, it was still just even from my point of view, I was just like. Man, this just does not feel. I will like, say the Guardians portion at the beginning, like the the way that Thor exited was funny, but I feel like that transition wasn't as smooth. Um, I feel like uh, the the part where like, and I like you know Christian uh, he came through and he was like, "Hey, this is my friend," and he he gets his head chopped off like that stuff. That was like, "Oh, that's a sick." Hey, you're doing that with kids. You're a villain, but it it didn't no, really I, defeat no, the perfect. You know and that that part was you know dark. I felt no. I feel like this. I feel like the whole thing was kind of dark. Yeah. Uh, like it it did have like a very darker tone, especially since the last Thor movie that we true. Did. Um, then the last Thor movie was uh, it was the one with the Hulk, wasn't it? No, 